Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Just a quick abbreviated uh, version of the nightly update. Uh, my wife's a little bit under the weather, so I have to have both kids set out for uh, practice in two different towns. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit rushed today, but hopefully we'll get uh, our point across. Again, uh, if you are brand new to the channel, please like, share, uh, and subscribe. We'd love to uh, continue to kind of guide you through your uh, to your development journey with unbiased uh, technical analysis. So let's talk about the market. So uh, going into uh, today's session, if you watched last night's video, uh, we had a, a pretty open-ended question. The question was, you know, the bulls have done a pretty good job. The technology bulls have done a pretty good job uh, in seeing, you know, all these bank headlines and kind of engulfing them and taking them higher. Again, the theory behind that is now that uh, this whole, you know, can of worms have opened up, you know, is there a possible chance that not only is there not going to be another uh, Fed hike in the March 22nd meeting, but there's a shot, right? That's a speculation. There's a shot uh, that they actually could cut rates. I personally don't think they could. Well, I know they could, but I don't per personally think they will. But, you know, you never know. It's out there. And the market is engulfing that, right? They're running with it. And now we have three days in a row ever since the whole SIVB uh, news hit and the SBNY news hit and all that good stuff in between. The the futures keep on building, right? The, every single level. We talked about that level uh, two nights ago off the 294.35. We talked about that 298 level that started, you know, really, really getting aggressive towards the end of the day. So the, the market, the bulls, the technology bulls are doing a really, really great job uh, running into potential speculation of a potential rate cut. And the good part about it is they are engulfing headlines. Now, the question going into today, as we talked about last night, well, what was going to happen? Uh, what was going to happen to the market? How are these bulls going to uh, handle the next possible shoe drop? Now, granted, I didn't think the next possible shoe drop was going to be literally tomorrow, right, which is today. So we, we wanted to see, we, we kind of got that, that answer uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, Pre-market, you saw Credit Suisse and Credit uh, Credit Suisse has been, if you go all the way back to uh, the 2007, 2008 mortgage crisis, it, it felt like Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank and Barclays, it felt like they were always hiding something. It, it's like one of these, it's like these three stocks, they just, you know, all these, and again, I'm not saying anything. I'm just kind of like, like, like talking right now, but it always felt like they were, they were hiding something. Even back in 2007, like Credit Suisse wouldn't, you know, everybody was doing write downs of, you know, all these credit default swaps and all these toxic assets and credit Suisse was kind of like in the shadows not really giving the full picture so this morning you kind of woke up you saw a credit Suisse down 20 percent on the day at one point it was down 30 percent of the day uh their biggest uh shareholder i believe was the saudi national bank and said look we're we're we're, we're wiping our hands we're, we're not giving you guys any more money and obviously uh liquidity right that's the biggest problem it's not uh leverage it's the liquidity factor that's different between this time around in 2007 2008 as you can imagine uh this thing got hit it took down everything else with it uh you know every single stock that had exposure to any single bad news and again once again we started gapping down the dow was down like four excuse me 650 points uh <clears throat> the nasdaq was down like 250 and the one thing that we kept on reiterating and you'll see here on the twitter feed right before we started the day right so here was you know here was our watch list from last night and I said, beta might go green today. It might go green. And the, the only reason why I said that, number one, everything traded towards the top of the range yesterday. We kind of discussed that. We talked about last night how AMD looked great and NVIDIA looked great and Meta looked great and Microsoft looked great, right? Remember the whole video from last night? So I, it, and if you looked at them pre-market, everything, you know, when, when the NASDAQ was down like 200, two and change, you saw kind of everything, you know, Tesla was down like three, even though Tesla never went green. Tesla was down three. Nvidia was down three and change. Meta was down like a dollar and change. Um, Microsoft was down like a 50 cents, a dollar and change. So I said, listen, you know, the Nasdaq's down 200, but nothing's really going down. And then slowly but surely the market, you know, you started seeing some green names popping up. You saw Microsoft go green. You saw 
uh, Meta go green. You saw Netflix go green, and then they started coming back. And they tried to sell off the market several times today. Several times they try to take technology down three, four times. And I, I won't say much. The majority of the day was like a ping pong match. And you'll see it up here. Uh, you'll see it up here. Uh, we you know talked about it. You know today's range is 296.20 to the upside, 292 to the downside. Right, it held three times. So we were kind of just stuck in this range the whole time, the whole time, the whole time. And then finally around 3 o'clock or so, right? Around 3 o'clock, they busted those ranges. Bulls busted those ranges. Uh, we started going really aggressive. The queue started taking out the previous day's channel. And all these stocks that we were watching that we talked about pre-market, for the exception of Tesla and the exception of... I think that's it. For the exception of Tesla, everything went, right? Everything went. And when you look at all the names that we were talking about yesterday, they all confirmed in the afternoon. Remember we were talking about AMD? AMD broke out. Uh, Meta, right? Meta broke out. They took. They both took down their earnings highs. NVIDIA reclaimed the previous channel's high. Now it's stone throws away from taking out the high from last week as well. Look at Amazon going into tomorrow, right? Look at Amazon. If Amazon confirms the 50-day, look how long the range is. The range started on Amazon on February the 22nd. You see this whole range here, right? This whole range here. If Amazon can reclaim though, if Amazon can reclaim tomorrow the February 22nd channel, this thing could go. We started seeing some 99 and 100 calls uh, being lit up here. So it's something very, very uh, interesting. To definitely watch for tomorrow. Uh, Meta, if it continues to get going, again, maybe this thing runs uh, back to 200. AMD, the highest close in this whole formation, uh, got above uh, the 2.2 two highs, right? Uh, you have NVIDIA we just talked about as well. Uh, after the close, you have Adobe that came out with pretty good earnings, right? So that's definitely going to give a little bit of push into technology for tomorrow. So again, the question is, and, and I see this all over the place. Well, they're just holding up. They're holding up. They're holding up. And the question is, yeah, how long can the queues hold up? Or is this finally the start of a great disconnect, right? We always talk about it. You know, the market starts to go dumbfounded, right? It starts to go, um, you know, it starts to go numb to bad news. Again, we went bad news numb uh, during the pandemic, right? Well, you know, it was 2020, March of 2020, the worst month like in 20 years, what happened next month, right? April 2020 was like the best month in, in like 20 years. And there, so eventually sellers got numb to it. Bad news became numb. Like look what happened in 2007 and 2008, right? Horrible market. Market was going you know, Armageddon, financial Armageddon. We're going to zero. Everything's going to zero. We, we talked about this. We, you know, we talked about it. We came out and said, well, when's this market ever going to finally stop going down, right? November, you know, I think it was, uh, I forgot what month it is, but 2009, that's the generational low, right? Generational low, we started happening. Again, market got numb. Everything got numb to it. So that's a very, very uh, important part. Is it possible we start reclaiming, you know, tomorrow's channel and start really getting aggressive? I hope so, right? I hope so. Because again, the longer the bulls can keep on taking that punch to the guy, taking the kidney shot, taking, you know, taking the upper hand, taking, you know, the elbow to the throat and all that good stuff, eventually the sellers will get tired, right? The sellers will get tired of trying and eventually the bulls will wake up. The good part about it is this is the highest close in this whole formation. You see this, guys? This is the highest close. These are all red candles. So this is literally the highest close in this whole formation. So if tomorrow, what the bulls need to do is keep this going, right? Keep this going. Uh, if the bulls can start putting in a new channel, you know, 299 and a half, 300, well, yeah, there's a shot that we start expanding, right? We go to 301, which is the high from uh, March the 9th. And then ultimately, if the bulls continue to go, then we're talking about the highs here, right? The highs here of 304 from March the 6th. So we're set up here. So the question is, can the bulls continue to take these kidney punch, the elbow shots, uh, the eye gouges, right? The stopping on the foot, right? Everything uh, that like the WWE made possible. And by the way, speaking of the WWE, right? Stock is in its own little world here, right? This stock is something's going on here. This little world here. Uh, if you saw it two days ago, they were coming in for April 100 calls. I don't know why. I have no idea. But the point is something is definitely cooking here. And even when the stock market was down 600 points today, the stock didn't budge. This was literally off the open today. The stock just didn't budge. It just starts walking. They started walking up. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. So look, we're set up for tomorrow. Uh, again, is it possible the Bulls uh, have started this whole numbing effect? I hope so. I, mean, I think a lot of you guys hope as well. Uh, the best type of market is when the market starts negating bad news. 
and keeps on engulfing it. And that's exactly what the bulls have done uh, for the last couple of days. So the moral of the story is bulls three days in a row, uh, well, excuse me, three days in a row, higher, higher, higher lows, close at the highest form of uh, highest form in this whole range. And hopefully they can continue tomorrow. So here are the pivots uh, in uh, towards the um, for the day. Uh, a lot of them exploded towards uh, the afternoon. Uh, Tesla is the only one that didn't confirm. Uh, unfortunately, I was not here uh, for the AMD uh, explosion. I know a lot of you guys did cash. I already, I already left to pick up my daughter for school. But 88.30, uh, earnings highs needs to confirm. Here it was AMD. Right, so it took out the 88.30, took out the 89, traded to uh, 90 and a half. This thing confirms today's channel will go higher. Uh, you have Meta when absolutely nuts. Uh, took out the 94.30s this morning and then took out the 97.16, which is the earnings highs. Uh, so Meta is kind of the same thing as uh, same thing as AMD starting to pop here. Uh, Trading up to 98 today. Uh, you have Apple. Didn't quite get there. I still like Apple. Uh, NVIDIA got above the 4240s. Highest close in the whole formation. I'm still watching this 4445 level. Microsoft continues to go absolutely nuts. Uh, it actually saved my morning today. Uh, so Microsoft went absolutely nuts. It took out this whole channel here. Just absolutely exploded. Went to 266. Uh, the pivot here was off this 261 level. And look at Netflix, right? Look at Netflix, guys. It's thin as hell, but boy, oh boy. 299.50, 300 needs to build. And here was Netflix. Uh, again, you would never know the market is in the toilet. Here was Netflix. Took out this whole 299.50. 300 level went to 306 and change, which is the 10-day moving average. And this is initially, uh, we had an initial spike. Uh, we had an initial scalp off this 296.20s level. Jolted pretty, pretty aggressively then. Came in with the rest of the market. And, and as we know, uh, the market confirmed uh, market confirmed uh, 298. And this is the highest close uh, in the last uh, week or so. So that's it, guys. A li nice little abbreviated version. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are joining us tomorrow uh, in the live webinar, uh, please get there before uh, 9, you know, 9 o'clock, 9, 10 or so. Uh, we start morning strategy. Just a reminder, there is no, uh, there is no, um, there is no uh, video. Thursday nights, there's no video. So if you are going to make it to the webinar, tomorrow will be the day. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Time to be daddy, daddy daycare. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care.